Hello everybody and welcome to a new Plan Zoo video where we're going to be going through my top 30 habitat animals I would like to see in Planet Zoo. So this is largely just for DLCs this year and yeah, there are a few animals in here that you might find questionable and don't get me wrong, they are, but this is my personal wish list. If you have a different set of animals, do leave it down in the comments below and without further ado, let's get into it. The markhor is a large wild goat species from South and Central Asia. They live in the mountains with a shaggy coat to keep them warm against the cold winds and snow. Males are adorned with large spiraling horns that give them a distinct silhouette. They are the largest of the wild goat species, and markhor has distinct sexual dimorphism, with males having larger horns and longer beards than the females that have short horns and lack a longer coat. The major predators of the markhor are wolves, lynx, golden eagles, brown bears, and snow leopards. The biggest threat to markhor is hunting by people. Poaching has caused fragmentation in the species population. American black bears are North America's most numerous bear and perhaps the most adaptable. Able to be found in a variety of habitats from the wetlands of Florida, the Sonoran Desert, the forests of the East Coast, and the subtropical evergreen forests of the Pacific Northwest. They are one of many examples of American wildlife that is adapting to the urban landscape and has created problems with conflict with people. The main threats to American black bears is hunting and habitat loss, but they can adapt well to changing environments. They are largely herbivorous, but also dining on salmon when it's in season, and on insects as well as honey. They are one of two remaining bear species that plants who currently lack and would be a great species to boost American biodiversity. Red Akudu are a large species of spiral horned antelope from the scrublands and savannas of southern and eastern Africa. Female kudu lack horns and generally form herds of 6 to 10 individuals, including their calves, and are occasionally joined by solitary males during the breeding season. Mature bulls are not often targeted by predators, but their cows and calves are hunted by predators such as lions, leopards, wild dogs, and hyenas. Despite occupying a large range, they are sparsely populated due to habitat loss. The deforestation of savannah woodlands and poaching is another significant threat to this species. Rock hyrax is a small mammal found on rocky outcrops and coffees in Africa. Despite their ro rodent-like appearance, hyraxes are closely related to elephants and sirenians. The Cape rock hyrax is found in southern Africa, separated from the other subspecies of rock hyrax that are found in the northern half of Africa and around the Red Sea into the Middle East. Hyraxes make over 20 different vocalizations, including a high trill, which is made when a predator such as a bird of prey or a wild cat is spotted. Hyraxes live in e egalitarian groups, meaning that their social structure is balanced amongst individuals. Fishing cats are a peculiar small cat from southern and southeast Asia. They get their name from the preference of fish in their diet, inhabiting wetlands and river systems to catch them. They are perhaps the best adapted feline for a semi-aquatic lifestyle as they also possess webbed feet to assist in aquatic pursuits. Being a specialised hunter, the main threats to fishing cats include the destruction of wetlands, overfishing of fish stocks, pollution, the conversion of wetlands and mangroves to agricultural and residential use. They are also targeted kills to preserve fish catches by people, which has seen a decline in their population. The shoebill or whale-headed stork is not actually a stork at all, instead being more closely related to pelicaniforms, which includes, of course, pelicans, but also the hammercock, ibises, spoonbills, and herons. They live in tropical wetlands from South Sudan down to Zambia, using their large bill to snap up large catfish, tilapia, bashir, and lungfish, but have also been known to prey upon waterfowl, turtles, small mammals, and even crocodile hatchlings. Unlike their relatives, shoebill pairs will nest solitarily rather than a colony, defending a territory from rival pairs and laying one to three eggs. The second and third chicks are laid as backups in case of the eldest chick dying or being too weak to survive. Their primary threats include habitat loss, disturbance and hunting. They are a rare but privileged site in zoos and have been successfully bred in captivity on occasion. Over recent years, this mysterious bird has seen a boost in popularity due to its intimidating presence and its tendency to stare and remain still for long periods of time. Patagonian maras are a bizarre rabbit-like rodent, relative of the capybara from the grasslands and deserts of Patagonia, a region in South America shared by Chile and Argentina, with the large majority of the maras range existing in Argentina. 
They are herbivorous, feeding on vegetation and fruit. Like many kinds of rodent, they are monogamous, forming a pair, but will breed in warrens that are shared by many other Mara pairs. Living in large groups gives the young, which can rear a litter of 22 in a communal den, a greater chance of survival against predators such as felids, canids, and mustelids. Southern tamanduas, or lesser anteaters, are a tree dwelling cousin of the giant anteater of the savannas. Their hooked claws allow them to climb with ease, assisted by a prehensile tail. Like all anteaters, they are insectivorous, preying on various termites, ants, and in the case of the tamandua, bees. They prefer areas close to water where the moisture allows trees to carry vines and epiphytes, which creates a more ideal habitat for insects, and therefore the tamandua as well. They inhabit a variety of different habitats, both wet and dry forests, savannas, and thorn scrub. They are thought to have diverged from their cousin, the giant anteater, in the late Miocene, with this group adopting a largely arboreal lifestyle compared to their terrestrial cousin. Greater rheas are the largest of South America's birds and the largest flight flightless bird of the Americas. They are ratites, making them relatives to emus, cassowaries, kiwis, and ostriches, and they do share a great resemblance to their larger African cousin. They prefer large open areas, grasslands, savanna, and grassy wetlands where their long legs assist in wading through water that other animals can't. Unlike their cousins, they are largely silent and only make a large amount of noise during the breeding season and as chicks. Their flocks have ranged between 10 to even 100 birds, roaming the plains feeding on vegetation, fruit, invertebrates, and on occasion will take reptiles, small mammals, smaller birds, and fish. Cuban crocodiles are a personal favourite of mine. They are a critically endangered, small to medium-sized species of crocodilian endemic to the island of Cuba in the Caribbean. They are the most terrestrial of all extant crocodiles with long, strong legs to support this lifestyle. With these long legs, they have been seen galloping after people as if they were a mammalian carnivore. This aggression has had them regarded as the most aggressive of the New World crocodiles, the other two being the American and Orinoco crocodiles, and where Cuban crocodiles and American crocodiles cohabitate the same area, the Cuban crocodile is seen to be the more behaviorally dominant of the two, despite it being much smaller. They live in swamps, wetlands, and mangroves in fresh to brackish water. Many threats have contributed to its endangerment, such as hunting and habitat loss, but also hybridization with American crocodiles, which limits the pure gene pool of this species. Ocelots are a medium-sized spotted wildcat of the Americas found from north to south in a range of different habitats, from the Sonoran Desert to the depths of the Amazon rainforest. The ocelot is one of the most versatile of the New World felines, an efficient climber, leaper, and swimmer, which allows them to catch birds, reptiles, frogs, fish, small mammals and primates in the trees and on the forest floor. In the wild, they are more active during dusk, dawn, and nighttime. They are territorial and solitary except for the breeding season or a mother and cubs. Ocelots have been associated with human civilizations since the ancient Aztec and Incan civilizations. Today, they have a few threats including deforestation, hunting, and collisions with traffic. Grey crowned cranes are found in dry savannas and wetlands of southern and eastern Africa. It is one of two species of crown crane, that, the other being the black crown crane of West Africa and the Sahel region. The crown cranes are the only cranes that can nest in trees with a long hind toe that can assist in grasping branches. Grey crown cranes have a graceful courtship display involving jumpings, bowings, and dancing. They also have a bright red gular sac on their neck that inflates to create a loud booming call. They are omnivorous, consuming plants, seeds, invertebrates, amphibians, and occasionally snakes. Major threats to the crane include drainage of wetlands and riverine areas, as well as overgrazing of their habitat and pollution. The Hamadryas baboon is the northernmost of the baboon species found in the Horn of Africa and southwestern Arabian Peninsula. They have fewer predators than baboon species further south. Males are adorned by silver fur and a cape, with red skin as well as a, or being almost two times larger than the females. Hamadryas are unusual among baboons and macaques as they have a patriarchal society, with dominant males authorizing the movement of females and using force to control them, such as biting and grabbing of individuals that move too far. They also have an unusual multi-level society with males and a harem of females. These can form clans where the males are related and have their own harems, with two to four clans forming bands that could be 400 baboons strong. 
Though they are no longer found in Egypt, this species does appear in ancient Egyptian art and represents the powerful deity of Thoth. Ascribed to the gods among other roles, and an attendant to Thoth is a stenu who recorded the results of the weighing of the heart, is also represented by a Hamadryas, and grants them their other name, the sacred baboon. Gelatas are a species of monkey that is only found in Ethiopia's highlands of the far land Siamian Mountains, where they can be found in similar multi-level societies to the Hamadryas baboon, and can be found in similar numbers. It is the only living member of the genus Therapithecus, inhabiting grasslands, and is the only grass-grazing species of monkey on Earth. Males having a long golden brown cape with a large mane on their head. Gelatas have distinct pale eyelids and an hourglass-shaped patch of bright red skin on their chests. In territorial and dominance oriented displays, the males will flick their top lip up to show off huge canine teeth to discourage challenges, and these teeth are used in aggressive biting during a fight. A herd of gelatas can consist of up to 60 reproductive units that consist of up to 12 females, their young, and 1 to 4 males. The gelata has a complex range of vocalizations that is like that of humans, though not full speech, it comes closer than most other primates. Gelatas are uncommon in captivity, with only two zoos in the US exhibiting the species and the Bronx being the only one to breed them. In Europe, they do have a greater presence, but this rarity is due to exportation laws in Ethiopia that inhibits the exportation of its endemic species abroad. The walrus is a large pinniped of the Arctic and subarctic seas of the Northern Hemisphere. They are distinct from other members of the family with its large tusks that are used for defense against predators and other walruses also for hanging onto the edge of breathing holes in the ice. They live mostly in shallow seas off con continental shells where they search for bivalve mollusks on the seafloor using an array of sensory whiskers called vibrissae. They are large but are exceeded in weight only by the two species of elephant seal. The walrus only has two major predators aside from humans, those being the polar bear and orca, both of which would not often tackle an adult walrus, rather aim for the calves and will often back down to avoid significant injury from the walrus's tusks. They share features of both eared and true seals. The major similarity between walruses and eared seals is the use of all four flippers on land. They do, however, swim much like true seals. Rather than use, using flippers, they rely on whole body movement for turning and diving, as well as lacking external ears. Golden Lion Tamarins are a small species of New World monkey of the Atlantic coastal forests of Brazil. Like other lion tamarins, they get their name from the long hairs that grow from their head, neck and ears which make up the mane. This species is the largest of the tamarins and marmosets, and like others they have claw-like nails called tachylae which allow them to cling to the sides of trees. They also move quadrupedally along branches or on the ground whether they be walking, running, leaping or bounding through the trees. Tamarins are omnivores, with this species feeding on fruits and insects depending on the time of day. A family of tamarins will utilize dens to sleep during the night in vine thickets, tree cavities, and epiphytes on trees. Their limited range has made the species vulnerable to a whole variety of threats such as deforestation, poaching, and mining to name a few. However, captive programs stepped in to create a suitable insurance population that led to reintroduction programs. Thanks to reintroduction and translocation of isolated individuals to protect the preserves, the population in the wild has grown into the thousands. Manatees are herbivorous marine mammals and the largest of the Cyrenian family, closely related to elephants and hyraxes. The West Indian manatee is found from southeast and North America to the north of Brazil. Unlike the unrelated walrus, they also possess vibrissae, but it sparsely covers their body rather than just its whiskers. They help the manatee navigate turbid waterways and detect hydrodynamic stimuli in the same way that a fish's lateral line does. Due to their large size, manatees have few natural predators. It is thought that American alligators and crocodiles may have on occasion taken juveniles in fresh and brackish water, but rarely adults. However, in coastal ocean waters, manatees are at risk of attack from large sharks and orca. Plants who currently lack any fully aquatic animal species, but if we were to get one in the next year, it should certainly be the manatee. Short-beaked echidnas are one of three kinds of monotreme, the others being the platypus and long-beaked echidnas. Being a monotreme, they lay eggs, but they keep their eggs in their pouch where the young hatch and stay until strong enough to forage outside with their mother. Their strong forelimbs, tipped with powerful claws, allow for rapid excavation to burrow quickly to protect their soft underside from attack from predators. If that isn't an option, the echidna will curl into an impervious ball of spines. Echidnas are unable to sweat or deal, with, deal well with heat, so they spend most of the day hidden in a burrow and come out during the cooler times of the day, such as twilight and night hours. 
They possess a long 15 centimeter tongue to lick up termites and ants. Out of all remaining Australian species to be added to the game, the echidna is certainly at the top of my list in that regard. Black howlers are one of nine species of howler monkey, and one of the largest of the New World primates. They are found in countries such as Paraguay, Brazil, Bolivia, Argentina, and Uruguay. The species is sexually dimorphic, with the males being a jet black colour and females being golden brown, which gives this species another name, the black and gold howler. The hyoid bone in the throat is assumed to serve as a chamber for their defining howl. Like many New World monkeys, they also possess a prehensile tail to assist with an arboreal lifestyle. Their howl can be heard from two kilometres away. Vocalisation mostly happens around dawn to advertise the group's territory as occupied. Habitat loss, hunting and disease are the major threats that face howler monkeys. As one of the world's most iconic monkeys, this would be a fantastic addition to the game. Spectacle bear or Andean bear is the only species of bear found in the Andean mountains of northern, western South America. They are the largest land carnivore of the continent, despite being primarily herbivorous and dining on sweet fruits. They get there they are quite adaptable, and throughout their range, they occupy a range of different habitats, such as cloud forests, montane grasslands, dry forests, and scrub deserts. Spectacle bears are one of the most docile bears. When encountering a person, they will be docile but cautious, and will only be aggressive if they feel threatened or it is a mother and cubs. They are, however, still quite shy and will often retreat into high trees and use branches as a way of concealment. Adult bears don't often experience predation, but their only predator of cubs are pumas. False goril is an endangered freshwater crocodilian of the Malay Peninsula, Borneo, Sumatra, and a small part of Java. They are the only extant member of the genus and share many physical characteristics to the gharial, such as a thin snout to move quickly through water to catch fish. Aside from inhabiting rivers, they also frequent swamps and lakes. As well as fish, they will also prey upon primates, deer, water birds, and reptiles. False gharials are mound nesters, building a nest composed of dirt and plant material, and will lay a clutch of 13 to 35 eggs per nest, producing the largest eggs of extant crocodilian species. Unlike most crocodilians, once the nest is made and eggs are laid, the mother abandons the eggs to their fate, of which the hatchlings, when they hatch, will have no protection against predation. There has been increased conflict between false gharas and people in recent years due to habitat loss and deforestation, drainage of water sources, and lack of prey. The species is also hunted frequently for their meat, hide, and their eggs, are often harvested for consumption. Genetic isolation is a major problem faced by the species and was what what was once a well-connected population has become more fragmented. The false gharial or Thomas Stoma is my personal favourite crocodilian in the world and would add some diversity to the crocodilians that can be displayed in the Southeast Asian section to the zoos that is not a saltwater crocodile. It would also give this endangered species some much needed attention to help with its conservation. Sea otters are the smallest of marine mammals but are however the largest of the mustelids being heavier than giant otters and wolverines. They spend almost their entire lives in the sea, relying on kelp forests that grow in temperate waters of the Pacific coast of North America and far northeastern Asia. They breed all year round, and mothers carry their young on their bellies and are attached to a safety line made of kelp to ensure that their pup or themselves do not drift off into open water. Sea otters have soft, watertight fur to prevent hypothermia and the cold, temperate waters they live in from reaching the skin. Sea otters hunt a variety of marine vertebrates such as crabs, clams, mussels, sea urchins, and will on occasion hunt fish. When they bring their prey back up to the surface, they will use a rock to smash open the shell of their prey and then consume their meal. They were extensively hunted for their fur between the 18th to early 20th centuries, bringing their numbers down from the hundreds of thousands down to only a few thousand. A ban on the hunting of sea otters saw a recovery and the current numbers occupy two thirds of their former range. It is seen as a success for marine conservation, though populations in the Aleutian Islands and California remain under threat due to loss of kelp. Competition with marine fisheries and with lack of kelp in the Aleutian Islands, increased predation by orca has contributed to a bit of a de decline. Bush dogs are small canids found in South Central and South America, dwelling in the rainforests and grasslands of the continent. When they were first discovered, it was only fossils in caves until they were rediscovered to remain an extant species. 
They are the only living member of the genus, and with their closest living relative being the much taller maned wolf. They are also one of three canids, the others being the doll and African wild dog, to possess trenchant heel dentition on the molar of their lower carnassial tooth, which increases the cutting blade length. They also have partially webbed toes, allowing them to swim more effectively than other canids. Their typical prey is that of the continent's large rodents, such as capybaras and agoutis, but have been known to take on rheas, peccaries, and even tapirs, the continent's largest animals. Bush dogs are the most sociable of the South American canids, forming packs of single mating pairs and their relatives. Major threats to the bush dog include deforestation, fragmentation, prey loss, and hunting, as well as diseases transmitted from domestic dogs. These guys have made a great addition to the South American roster and, and have increasingly grown on me as a species I would love to see in Planet Zoo. Holding the world record of the toughest animal on Earth, the honey badger is a member of the mustelid family from a variety of habitats in Africa and Asia. They lack exposed ears and possess thick and flexible skin to assist in defense in such a hard environment where there are so many potential predators. An unusual feature of the honey badger is an anal pouch that more like that of hyenas and mongoose than to that of other mustelids. This is thought to have a calming effect on African honeybees so that they do not get bombarded with stings and invade a hive safely, but it is described as suffocating when smelt by people. They are largely solitary animals utilising the abandoned termite mounds and the burrows of aardvarks, warthogs and porcupines. They are impervious to bee stings, porcupine quills, and even immune to the venoms of most of the venomous snakes in Africa, including the black mamba. They famously defend their prey from large predators like lions and hyenas, as well as chasing off even large herbivores like buffalo. They are a generalist, eating a wide variety of different foods from fruit and plant matter to small mammals, reptiles like snakes and lizards, as well as the occasional scavenging of carcasses made by large predators. They are also very good climbers and swimmers as well as being quite in intelligent and problem-solving. This, combined with their dexterity, makes them great es escape artists in captivity, using any method possible to make a run for it. This would make them quite a challenge and an in interesting animal to house in Plant Zoo, and if all of this could be translated to the game, I would absolutely love to see the honey badger added to Planet Zoo. The musk ox or musk oxen is a large relative of sheep and goats from the Arctic tundra of North America as well as reintroduced populations in Eurasia. The musk ox's closest relative are the gorals of Central and Eastern Asia. Musk ox have long curved horns that are used for defence against would-be predators such as wolves and polar bears. Their long guard hairs that hang almost to the ground protect the animal against the cold temperatures of the Arctic winter as well as protect the skin against any snow that falls and forms on the fur. They are a heterothermic mammal, allowing them to shut off thermoregulation in certain parts of their bodies, such as their legs, to help reduce heat loss. Musk ox have an age-based hierarchy in the, in the herd, with mature animals being more dominant than juveniles, which grants them access to the best resources. Bulls in the rutting season will rub the preorbital glands in front of their eyes against their legs, while bellowing loudly and showing their horns off to challengers. They then back up about 20 metres or more and then run at great speed, charging into each other headstrong, creating a loud bang, and this battle will continue until one of them submits. The musk oxen's most famous defence strategy is the herd forming a circle, protecting the juveniles behind a wall of horns. The musk ox is one of the most notable animals of the Arctic and would be a magnificent addition to Planet Zoo, especially seeing how Frontier would be able to create the hanging fur effect to bring this animal to life. The Geoffroy's black-handed or Central American spider monkey is one of the most common species of spider monkey exhibited in captivity. This species is found in Central America in a small part of Colombia. The arms of the spider monkey are longer than its legs and possess a long prehensile tail that acts as a fifth limb that could support the monkey's entire weight. To help the brachiating nature, they lack a thumb to allow easier swinging. They live in fission fusion societies of 20 to 42 individuals. They will disperse at the start of the day to forage in different parts of their territory and come back together at the end of the day. This species is found in rainforests, semi-deciduous forests and even mangrove forests where they search for ripe fleshy fruit and leaves. When danger like a harpy eagle, a wild cat or a large snake is spotted, the spider monkeys will make a, a barking alarm call as well as a variety of other vocalizations. Behind chimpanzees and orangutans, spider monkeys are considered the third most intelligent non-human primate. The primary threats to the species are hunting and deforestation of the jungle habitat. Given their prevalence in zoos, 
that this is one of my most wanted monkey species as it would be able to utilize the breaking mechanic that is currently only used by gibbons and orangutans. They also have a diverse range of coloration similar to that of the La gibbon and would be a very fun species to build habitats for in the game. The secretary bird is a largely terrestrial bird, bird of prey from sub-Saharan Africa. This bird is distinguished by its distinct silver and black feathers with, with, with a colourful yellow to red face and long scaly crane-like legs tipped with talon feet. The hard scales of the legs help protect the bird against the bites of prey and will stomp its victims to death and then consume them. To prevent theft from predators, a pair of secretary birds will build a nest at the top of a thorny tree and lay one to three eggs. They form monogamous pairs and during courtship they will fly high in the sky and in an undulating pattern while calling a loud guttural croaking. Unlike most birds of prey, they hunt their prey on the ground. Their long legs allow for better terrestrial movement and will mostly hunt small animals like insects, amphibians, reptiles, smaller birds and small mammals. But like many birds of prey, they are opportunists and have been known to take young gazelles, mongoose, hedgehogs, hares, mustelids and even cheetah cubs. The secretary bird is also symbolic of many countries, being present on the South African coat of arms, the emblem of Sudan, and a common motif on the postage stamps of many other African countries. The secretary bird has seen a rapid decline in recent years due to extensive habitat loss and destruction, taking away viable habitat and nesting sites, as well as loss of suitable prey to sustain more of these birds. With distinct silhouettes, symbolism, and just as an incredible bird species and a diverse addition from Africa, the secretary bird is easily in my top five most wanted animals. The good fellows tree kangaroo is an endangered arboreal macropod from the rainforests and cloud forests of eastern Papua New Guinea. This species has a mix of red, orange, and yellow fur with a lighter underbelly. Unlike many arboreal species, their exceptionally long tail is for balance when bounding through the trees rather than being prehensile. Like its terrestrial relatives, the tree kangaroo also carries its young in a pouch, but unlike other macropods like kangaroos, wallabies and quokkas, they do not possess large feet, instead being of a similar size to their hands, which are tipped with sharp claws that assist with grip while climbing through the trees. The Goodfellas tree kangaroo is a herbivore, feeding primarily on the leaves of the maple silkwood tree, with other food being eaten if available, such as flowers, crops, grasses and various fruits. They have large stomachs that act in a similar function to the ruminant digestive system of animals like cattle to help digest tough fibrous leaves and grasses. On the ground, tree kangaroos are slow and clumsy, leaning forward to balance their heavy tail. They climb, they climb by gripping the tree trunk with their forelimbs and then pushing upwards with their powerful legs and sliding their arms upwards. The species is threatened by hunting and deforestation of their habitat. And Goodfellas tree kangaroos are an endangered species as a result. However, Goodfellas tree kangaroos are the most commonly displayed of the tree kangaroos in Australia and perhaps the world. I know what the balance is between the Matchies and the Goodfellas at this point, but they are displayed in Australia more so than Australia's two native tree kangaroo species. They are my personal most wanted Oceania species that would add a great diversity to the range of animals that can be displayed in Oceania themed areas and it just had to make my top three. The South American or ring-tailed coati is a relative of the raccoon from the tropical and subtropical regions of South America. Their coloration is highly variable, exhibiting a whole range, all having a ring tail. It is found in many forests and thorn scrub is to the east of the Andes, being found up to 2,500 meters. South American coatis are diurnal, foraging throughout the forest, searching for fruits, invertebrates, bird eggs, and many other small animals. The coati's flexible nose is used to probe gaps in rocks and open logs with their claws searching for insects. They typically live in large groups called bands comprised of females and their young that can number between 15 to 30 coatis, while males are generally solitary and were once considered a different species called a coata mundi. Coatis sleep in the trees and are quiet and will produce soft whining sounds, but alarm calls are loud wolves or clicks and all will climb a tree to evade a predator such as a cat, a fox, or a loud human. In the wild, females will give birth in a nest in the trees and will rejoin the group with one to seven young in tow. They are a common sight in many zoos and add some great diversity to the South American roster and could be used in a whole variety of builds and are my runner-up on my list. My number one may be a little surprising, 
The cockerel safaka is a cool and quirky species of critically endangered lemur from the dry deciduous forests of Madagascar's northwest. This diurnal lemur gained popularity as it was the species represented by Zabumafu in the TV show Zabumafu. They have white fur on their head, back, tail and legs with maroon arms, belly and thighs. Shafakas have long tails which assist in balance when climbing and will leap vertically from tree to tree. And with great depth perception, they will precisely position their hands and feet mid-leap to, to the best landing position if the landing site has any obstructions such as spines. They also have a pseudo-opposable thumb which assists in grip. With such an arboreal specialized build, shafakas cannot walk on the ground. Instead, they jump along the ground with their arms outstretched for balance. Unlike their relative, the Varro Shafaka, they don't leap sideways, instead leaping forward like a kangaroo. They have a limited vocalization set, often humming, except when alarms alarmed by the presence of a predator like a fusa, they will make a loud roar which sounds like Shifa, which gave this family their le of lemurs their name. They will huddle in groups in the branches for warmth on cold nights. Shafakas are herbivorous, feeding on leaves, flowers, and fruits. Like all lemurs, shafakas have a tooth comb, which assists in grooming. They live in matriarchal society with a group that numbers between three to ten individuals. The species is threatened by deforestation, fragmentation, introduced species, and hunting by humans. This is my number one, as they are such a quirky and bizarre animal that I would love to see Frontier bring to life in Plant Zoo, and I would just love to see the cockerel shafaka in the game. And there you have it. That is my top 30 animals that I would like to see in Planet Zoo. Let me know what you think of my list. And if you have any different animals, do leave them in the comments down below of your most wanted animals in Planet Zoo. Make it a top 30 so it's not a list of 100 that I would have to read. But yeah, I just wanted to make this video for this year as I would really love to see all these animals get added before the game ends, ideally. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, do leave a like and subscribe for more as we are nearing 900 and then 1,000 subscribers. And I can't thank you guys enough for the support that you've been giving me over the last few weeks. And yeah, that is the video. And I'll be seeing you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.